Hello, my name's Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about natural gas liquids, the less loved stepchild of hydrocarbons. So, propane, butane, pentane, and ethane, which have got a lot of industrial uses but are not talked about quite as much within the oil and gas space. So, natural gas hydrocarbons are natural gas liquids are hydrocarbons that come between methane and crude oils. So, they're ethane, propane, butane, and pentane. They're byproducts of crude oil or wet natural gas production and are recovered and are recovered during refining and gas processing. And it's very important not to confuse them with condensate, which is slightly heavier alkanes, which naturally condense out of wet natural gas when it's produced at service. Due to fall in pressure, slight fall in temperature, they drop out, whereas NGLs are recovered in the, in the processing plants. Key thing to bear in mind about NGLs is that a lot of the use is non-combustible in petrochemicals, solvents, plastics, polymers, etc. And some of the hydrocarbon producers tend to lump NGLs together with crude oil, particularly in the United States. Uh, they put all together as barrels of oil equivalent, and that may not be the right thing to do because the prices are different, and the uses are different, the markets are different. So let's have a little look around the world. So these are the three main producers of crude and hydrocarbon liquids. So we got America in blue, Saudi Arabia in green, and Russia in red. So America's king of the hill, producing nearly 16,000 barrels of uh, hydrocarbon liquids. But wait a minute, when you strip out NGLs, they all tend to be roughly the same at around 11 to 12 um, million barrels of oil per day. So a lot of that here in the light blue is accounted by NGLs, whereas there's quite a bit less in Saudi Arabia and very little in Russia, and that's a bit of a mystery as to why that's, that happens. When you look at who produces NGLs, this is a graph of the BP uh, Statistical Review of World Energy, and the bulk of it, uh, over a third, 37%, is produced by the USA. Then you have Norway, uh, Canada, uh, rest of the OECD, so that includes the UK. Then you've got Saudi Arabia, Qatar with the world's largest gas field, Iran with the other half of the world's largest gas field plus some other gas fields, uh, Kuwait, little sliver for Russia, Algeria, which also produces a lot of content, and that's the rest of the world. So you can see quite a bit of growth, and virtually all that growth has come from the USA. These are this is the pie chart of the world's current producers, so there are two sources here. This is from the ENI World Crude Oil Report from last year, and this is from the BP Statistical Review of World Energy. The key point is the percentages might be slightly different, but fundamentally they're virtually identical. America dominates, then Saudi, then Canada, then Iran, and then a whole bunch of others, and then others at the bottom. So America, for natural gas, is king of the hill. Natural gas liquids is king of the hill. So uh, they produced a whopping 4,349,000 barrels of oil of uh, liquids per day, 37% of the global total. And a lot of that growth has been a byproduct of the light tight oil, the fracking, and it's led to a revival of the US petrochemical industry, obviously a big boon to the United States economy. Also, the Americans do export significant amounts of NGLs, propane, uh, butane, etc., to, to other countries. And the key mystery here, though, is why does Russia produce so few NGLs? A lot of oil, a lot of natural gas. If a Russian specialist can explain this to me, I will be very grateful. So this is um, some projections from the United States Energy Information Administration, EIA. So this is history. So up until about uh, 2007, 2008, it was bumbling along at under two, uh, 2 million barrels a day. And then you had the fracking revolution. First of all, within gas, so wet basins like the Marcellus in Pennsylvania. And then you had uh, crude oil-based basins, which had a lot of gas, like the Eagleford in Texas, or the Permian in western part of Texas, New Mexico. That's grown quite significantly. And the various different projections that they have, both in terms of uh, oil price, resource scale, economic growth, which is uh, the demand for it. So these are projections from the EIA. So in the lower case scenario, we'd like to stay at relatively high levels. In high case scenario, growing very significantly. So what are NGLs used for? 
So these are chemical formula for the NGLs, as you remember from your high school chemistry. So at the uh, lightest end, you have ethane, which is C2H6. Uh, it's used mainly for plastics. Some used for antifreeze secretions, you know, ethylene glycol, detergents, etc. So almost all these sectors are industrial. Very little ethane is, uh, is, is burnt. Propane, a lot more of that's burnt. So if you've got a patio heater or an outdoor barbecue or remote gas, then that will be fueled with propane. Uh, also some industrial uses and some uh, petrochemical feedstock uses. Butane, used for petrochemical feedstocks. Now there are two types of butane. If you remember, there's isobutane and straight butane. Uh, if you remember from your high school chemistry, uh, both are used for petrochemical feedstocks lately. Some of it's blended in with either propane or gasoline. It's also used for lighter fuel. Uh, made for synthetic rubber aerosols, which is why it's so you have to be so careful if you are disposing of an aerosol that you don't put anywhere near fire, which is why you don't expose an aerosol to naked flame. Sorry, safety moment. Uh, Paintainer is used for gasoline to some extent uh, for some uh, petrochemicals. Uh, so pentane is blended into gasoline, and then the other components, hexades, etc., are all blended into 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 fuels. So a wide variety of uses, mainly industrial, some for combustion. These are volumes of fraction of natural gas liquids. So this is from America. So just under 40% is ethane. Uh, 35 and a bit percent is, prop is propane. Then you have the two butanes and then you have the heavies. Again, uh, I, I don't have the information for the rest of the world, but it's probably something not too dissimilar. If you're looking where the consumption is used for NGLs, so within the industrial scale, almost all of it is used for chemical feedstock. A little bit of it is used within industrial scale for heat and power. Now, in terms of residential, obviously, a lot more heat and power. Your barbecue, your patio heater, your colour gas, um, if you're British. Um, so that's where that's used. Again, quite important. Talking a little bit about prices. So this is uh, prices and barrels of oil equivalent. So prices have been normalised for the different components. So in the light green at the bottom, you have the Henry Hub. The Henry Hub is the main exchange for natural gas in America, so that's effectively natural gas prices, and they're about uh, $17, $18 or thereabouts per barrel of oil equivalent, so significantly less than crude oil. So using a uh, 6 MMBTU per, uh, per barrel of oil equivalent conversion factor. Then you have three different types of oil. In the very light blue, you have Brent, which is the main international marker. In yellow, you have WTI, West Texas Intermediate the main US marker, and in the dark red you have Western Canadian Select, which is the main Canadian marker, which is a heavier oil than either WTI or Brent, and it's used within blending. If you want to know about more about crude oils and the different benchmarks, I have a video on that uh, on my YouTube channel. Now the mid-blue in the thick line is NGL Composites, so this is again a barrel of oil equivalent in terms of prices for a barrel of oil equivalent of a composite blend of NGLs, natural gas liquids. This is a marker produced by the um, Energy Information Administration in America. And what you can see here is it's roughly halfway in terms of uh, calorific equivalent between crudes and um, Henry Hub, or the natural gas. Somewhat higher in some time, somewhat a little lower in others, but generally sort of halfway between the two, and it tends to attract the oil price reasonably well. However, when you look at before Corona and after Corona, this graph bar chart shows prices, average prices in July 19 and in October 2020. So you can see Brent has gone from about 64 to just over 40. WTI has gone from around 58 to just under 40. Western Canadian Select, which is heavier crude, gone from around 45 to around 30. Uh, the NBP is the national balancing point, which is gas in the United Kingdom, converted into dollars. And you can see that's quite a bit higher than the Henry Hub price, which is the main gas, natural gas price in America, or the Waha price, which is the natural gas hub in the Permian Basin, where they have a bit of a problem because they have a surplus of gas and not enough evacuation routes. Now, obviously, when the pipelines are built, the two, this and this, will become more equal in equilibrium. But NGLs, you can see traditionally have been roughly half, between half and two-thirds of crude prices, but they've stayed relatively stable. Again, 
due to industrial demand that's uh, somewhat less affected than transportation demand, uh, which is the uh, main market for crudes. The Henry Hub, I believe, is uh, is seasonal, basically, because you're beginning to come into, into slightly colder winters in October in America. So, to sum up, natural gas liquids have been less love portion hydrocarbon family. Nobody really talks about them, they're sort of ignored. A bit like an unloved stepchild. Well, they've made an enormous contribution to modern life through plastics, petrochemicals, solvents, etc. Things we all take for granted, don't even bat an eyelid, don't even think about. Tend to be valued at 50 to 70 percent of crude oil on a barrel of oil equivalent basis. And some commentators include NGLs in crude oil production. I feel they shouldn't because they have a different value, 50 to 70 percent of crude oil value, and they have slightly different uses, so a different market. The USA is king of the hill in natural gas liquids, and it's climbing even higher due to fracking. In the revival of petrochemicals, the stepchild is now getting some love. So, there's a, was a TV show called King of the Hill about a propane salesman. And a little song called Propane, based on Eric Clapton's song Cocaine. You know, if you've got heating bill blues, got some good news. Propane. Please go buy, please go buy, please go buy. Propane. So apologies to JJ K and Eric Clapton. I'll put a link to the, in the in description to the song. And thank you very much for your time. And please buy some propane.